Hey guys, in this video we're going to create this web app from scratch using Figma and by the end of the video you're going to learn some tips and tricks about my workflow in Figma and how to get to similar results in a fast and efficient way. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So let's start building this uh, web app. So the very first thing uh, which uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do is to create uh, a frame uh, which uh, is going to contain uh, the actual web app uh, screen. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I'm just starting by creating some uh, uh, rough shapes, uh, which uh, in this case, it's going to be the site menu. And uh, this is all, always like the very first screen. Uh, it's always, uh, all about experimenting and trying different visual styles. One of the things which uh, I like to do is to go on platforms uh, like uh, Dribble and uh, Behance in order to get some inspiration when it comes to the visual design. And uh, with the first screen uh, is just about uh, getting the feeling uh, for the web app because essentially the very first screen is going to set the tone uh, and uh, act uh, almost as a template for all of the screens to come because we always want to want to maintain an element of uh, consistency in uh, the web apps uh, and uh, in the entire design project so the very first screen is uh, crucial and uh, one of the things that i like to do with um, when i'm tackling a client project is uh, i'm literally going to explain them what I just uh, mentioned and uh, on top of that I usually would suggest to start a project by having uh, two or three visual designs uh, concepts uh, so that we can uh, discuss them together and uh, see the feedback from uh, the client uh, hear what their thoughts are on uh, on the directions because again the very first screen it's uh, it's quite important and uh, we want to set uh, important elements like the typography what's the visual language like when it comes to colors white space uh, and uh, all of these things so what i'm doing right now is uh, i'm trying to set the tone and uh, just experimenting so one thing that we're going to do it throughout this project is um, uh, we're going to try to maintain a level of consistency in between uh, the screens uh, and uh, part of it uh, we can achieve it by simply uh, copying uh, some of the elements uh, the typography styles, the UI, UX elements, uh, as uh, you're going to see throughout the project. But um, another thing that uh, is going to really help us uh, is we're going to create uh, a basic design system. And uh, although we're not going to go into anything uh, too granular, we're, we're going to have a design system set up in a way that enables us to be on the same page when it comes to the visual design with stakeholders, developers, other designers. So basically it's going to help us create that one source of truth in order to really be consistent throughout the project. And uh, we are taking this uh, uh, as if it was uh, a, a client project for a real web app. So let's uh, um, do that. And uh, also, as you can see here, I'm uh, literally like selecting uh, the groups uh, and uh, trying different things when it comes to, to, the, to the menu items. Um, I was thinking of having icons on the left, uh, but for the moment, I just kept these uh, circles in order to just get the feeling for, for the web app, really, and uh, not stress too much about uh, the details because even things like icons uh, can uh, take up uh, quite a, a bit of importance in, uh, in the decision making at first. So at the moment, I don't want to really stress about the details. I just want to get a general overview of the structure of the visual language and really be sure that this uh, is uh, the right tone uh, which uh, I'm looking for this specific project.
So as you can see in this moment, we're going to create the very right section, which is essentially a collection of cards. So we're thinking about it from a user perspective and uh, the user of this app uh, would actually hop into this dashboard and the very first thing that we want to show them is uh, the cards that he has uh, registered inside. Now we're going to create uh, some uh, fictional cards and also a call to action in order to add a new card. And uh, this is something which uh, we want to consider as well as other UX interactions such as the delete option or how he can edit cards, how he can update uh, cards and uh, so on. Now I'm just uh, here and uh, trying to think about what information I want to show on the card. So the very first thing that I thought about is maybe you can show a certain amount uh, which uh, the user has uh, in the card. And again guys, I'm totally making this uh, up. Uh, so it's just uh, using fictional numbers, fictional data and um, try to get a sense of what could make sense in uh, the real world. <laughs> if, uh, uh, so basically the goal here is to create uh, these uh, cards uh, in a efficient and uh, clean way and uh, we added some, um, some informations really that uh, could be potentially useful in this case and um, the idea would be to actually have prepaid cards. So this wouldn't be actual credit cards. These would be maybe prepaid cards which uh, come uh, with together with uh, this uh, web app service or uh, software. So this would be the basic idea. And uh, here in Figma, I'm trying to play around with uh, font styles. So as you can see, the numbers are similar to what a credit card would be and uh, at the very top I'm putting some more emphasis on the actual amount. So I'm going to explore some more, have a look around for some uh, inspiration and things like that. I'm gonna grab the MasterCard logo now and uh, I'm going to explore some uh, more visual ideas.
So at this point we're adding our very first uh, call to action which is uh, a button and uh, I'm going to experiment with uh, a few different ideas when it comes to, to the buttons and uh, these are an excellent example of uh, what uh, a reusable component uh, looks like uh, in a design system because buttons you're probably going to use them uh, quite a fair amount uh, throughout uh, the um the the designs so it's definitely something that uh, we want to keep in mind as uh, at least to have it as a uh, symbol or component in as they're called in figma and uh, basically it's uh, one of those elements uh, that uh, you want to to consider usually when it comes to like web apps i like to have a primary button and also a secondary button for different type of uh, use cases the secondary buttons usually are the ones where we don't want to drive as much emphasis but we still need a button call to action and uh, of course for each and every one of these uh, elements uh, um, we usually want to consider what uh, is uh, called uh, with a crude ac acronym so basically crude stands for create read update and delete and uh, these are basically actions which uh, in most cases the user is going to want uh, to do at a certain point or at least uh, in um, there's just there's at least going to be some cases where that's going to be uh, the issue so we definitely want to consider all of these things in uh, the UX uh, in uh, general and uh, I wasn't specifically referring for, for to the buttons but in UX in general we always want to keep in mind uh, these uh, actions so if for example a user wants to create a new card how does he do that if a user wants to delete a new card how can he do that if he wants to to read it or undo the creation of a new card so these are these are things which are quite important to consider and uh, especially when you're working on, uh, on larger applications it's uh, it's always good to to keep in mind uh, things like empty states uh, and uh, edit options uh, so uh, everything is going to be clear and uh, again especially like i've been working on, on projects with uh, hundreds and hundreds of screens uh, and uh, I can tell you that it can become quite uh, overwhelming at times if you don't uh, plan out uh, the things from uh, a high level. So even before you jump uh, and uh, create the, the visual designs and uh, all of these uh, nice things which uh, we would like to do as designers, it's really important to consider the fact that uh, uh, planning from a high level and uh, focusing on the UX uh, and having a solid structure even before you do that it's uh, it's definitely something which is crucial and uh, can pay multiple dividends throughout the project um, without uh, a doubt so always good things to keep in mind
So here's a very interesting part uh, where we're actually going to use uh, Content Reel, which is uh, a Figma plugin. It's a free Figma plugin, which you can download uh, by going on uh, the very top left menu and uh, you're going to be able to see the plugins uh, option. If you can't find it, just go on uh, the top uh, section of uh, your bar and basically go on help uh, and search search for plugin basically you're going to be able to see exactly where you can find the plugins and uh, once you have it installed uh, which is going to take just uh, just a few seconds um, you can basically access these uh, tools which enable you to add the content such as photos and uh, as we're going to see in just a second uh, we can also add the uh, text uh, such as dates uh, and uh, emails and random names uh, in a very fast way so that you don't have to th even think about what uh, dummy text uh, you want to have uh, in the design file in order to make it look uh, more uh, similar to the to the actual real live app so this is really useful and um, i use this plugin uh, all the time and um, i started using uh, uh, this uh, even before I moved on to Figma, I, I used this also in uh, Sketch where they had the Craft plugin, which was uh, similarly uh, good. But this is kind of like the equivalent uh, of uh, the Craft plugin inside of uh, Figma. And uh, overall, it's a really good, uh, really good plugin, really solid, and uh, helps a ton. So why not using it? <laughs>
point. I'm going to create a analytics graph. So let's actually do something just for reference to be sure that all of the boxes are in a nice way. So actually, um, I'm going to add a little bit of more spacing. So I'm just going to make the width like this and uh, I'll probably adjust uh, these lines uh, in order to cover the exact width. And uh, I think I'm quite happy with this so far. And uh, in this video, in, in this part of the app, uh, we're also going to add uh, the icons. And by the way, as you noticed, uh, I modified uh, the width uh, of these sections and uh, the text uh, is uh, com pressed now. So what we're going to do is we're going to deep select all of these uh, elements and we're going to auto width uh, over here. So as you can see, it's just going to make it easier. And uh, I'm going to go here and write uh, analytics. And what I'm going to do next uh, is I'm going to grab one of these lines below and uh, I'm just going to copy and paste it uh, on the very right so that uh, it uh, is in line with uh, the right section. Now what I just did is I basically grabbed the text and I center aligned it so that whenever we're going to add all the other text and change the current one, we can easily do so. So I'm just going to duplicate these items just a few times so that we can create these graphs and then we're going to create a line which is going to connect all of them together.
rage on that beat going crazy. Alright, so I'm quite happy with uh, the progress that we made uh, on uh, the chart uh, and now we're going to leverage uh, this tool called uh, IconJar which uh, you can uh, download and try for free and essentially it's going to be an app which is going to make adding icons so much easier than actually going on, on a website and downloading them, them one by one because you can easily leverage this uh, software and uh, basically as you can see right now I have uh, the Google Material icons installed and you can download them for free. I think they're already inside Icon Jar. So basically what uh, you can do is uh, you can literally drag and drop them on top of your Figma file. So this is going to make it super easy. You can also search for a specific icon. So if I'm looking for user or anything I can see all of the icons right here I can literally just drag and drop them on top of the canvas now here there are some some more informations but I'm not too concerned about these um, so yeah that's uh, pretty much uh, it and uh, let's uh, start using these icons
Now we are going to remove uh, the frames uh, on all of these icons. So I'm going to shift uh, and select uh, all of them. And then I'm going to use com shift uh, command and G at the same time so I, that I can remove the frame. I'm also going to bring them here because I want to individually remove these backgrounds uh, or rectangles which uh, are being created by default. So that's just one of the things that you have to consider. And uh, once that is done, I can bring back uh, the icons inside of uh, the frame, change the color and we're going to be good to go. Right, so here's the end result. In uh, the following videos, we're going to create uh, more screens uh, and also the design system. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed this uh, first part of the web app.